Well, I'm nearing the end of this video series. There will only be one more video after this, and it's going to cover miscellaneous things not previously mentioned, or perhaps something I missed. So let me know if you have any suggestions for me, something specific you want to see, or something you think I missed that should be mentioned. So now I'm showing you a grenade spot where you can nade down sniper from almost complete cover. If you saw where I was aiming, there's some black lines in the back of the sniper cave. If you stand behind the left pillar on top of red base, aim at that, look straight up, there'll be three stars in a triangle shape, and you aim directly at the topmost star. With frag grenades, two frags will knock it down. Now if you do with plasmas, you'll need to aim up a little bit, but throw three plasmas, and that'll knock it down. I had to do a cut here because I could not find the sniper once it landed, but as you see, this is where it goes. It's possible to do with two plasmas or a plasma and a frag. You'll just have to aim up or down a little bit to adjust for the plasmas. Now here I'm showing you a couple spots where you can nade uh, into the magnum from the front of the base. Uh, it barely works. As you can see, I missed one there, and I'm only really showing you the best footage that worked. Uh, it does work on red base as well as blue. Now we're on Warlock, and I'm going to show you some spots where you can grenade through the wall. Next is a neat trick where if you walk along the wall over the air vents on any of the bases and jump right when you're over the vent, you'll get a height increase which will allow you to jump straight into the base. And this works at every base just like most tricks on Warlock work at every base or every symmetrical part of the map because the map is almost completely symmetrical. It is possible to nade through the ramps leading up to every platform, but it's very hard to do. I'm just showing you the footage where it's successful. As you can see, the plasma grenade works lower down the ramp, but the frag works higher up. I didn't really have an explanation for it. Next we got head glitches. There are a lot of pillars on this map, and any head glitches you see working in this space here will work in any of the three other bases because they all have the same pillars or crevices or nooks and crannies or whatever. This spot on the lifts has two pillars that lets you do two different head glitches. The smaller pillar provides better cover if you're fighting anyone on the plat in front of the base or on the base across the map. And the bigger pillar allows you to see top middle or more of the plat and the ramp of the base directly across from you. This one here, of course, also works on the other side of the map, shooting into red base. Now some flag hiding spots. There are a few pillars in each of the bases where you can throw the flag behind them, and it'll almost be completely covered. But that also depends on how the flag is waving for the other players. Like I mentioned in a previous video, how one player might see the flag waving through the wall, the other player may not. It may be waving a different direction and completely conceal the flag. It's also possible to throw the flag up in a few spots, as I'll show you here in a second. Uh, there are a few spots, I believe, where you can throw the flag up and out of the map where no one will be able to grab it or recover it. This spot here anyone can grab it or recover it, but I thought I'd show it off as an example. And if you didn't know, there are colored markings around the map designating which base is red, blue, green, and yellow.
Now I'm going to show you off some of the timing properties of the camo. It respawns 1 minute and 10 seconds after pickup, but it completely dissipates at about 50 seconds. So there will never be more than one person on the map with camo at a time. Just know that once the camo runs out, you got about 20 seconds before it comes back up again. Moving on to Sanctuary. Gonna start off with some more nades through the walls. And just like Warlock, this map is very symmetrical, so if a trick works on one part of the map, it almost certainly works on the other part. Now some head glitches. With this spot in the courtyard, as player 2 walks in the corner, you can see about a third of his body still visible. Mostly covered, but the important part, his head is uncovered. If you jump onto the ledge here and then walk into the corner, you're almost completely covered. Now, that was a bit of editing there to make him get into the corner, right? It took me a while to jump up in there. That's why I look kind of weird. This spot does not work at blue base because it has rocks that are shaped differently than the broken pillars here on red base. Once again, this spot is red base specific only. This one is also red base specific because of this rock's placement and shape. Now we got some trick jumps. Both bases can be jumped into from these big rocks on the left sides of the bases. The blue base one is harder than the red base one. You kind of have to walk off of it a little bit more before you jump. Now blue base here has this little piece of rock sticking out where you can jump straight up and get into the base. Cannot do that at red base. Both bases have these rocks in the courtyard where you can jump into the sniper hut. But you can also jump up to the left to the plasma pistol street at both bases. For this jump onto ring 3, you want to crouch jump into the spot, move out a little bit until your Spartan stands up, and then walk forward and do a delayed jump where your character actually walks off the platform a little bit before you jump in the air. It's possible to use the rocks that you would jump up into ring 2 with to jump into these other spots around the ring and then get up to ring 3. These jumps into ring 3 were very important back in competitive Halo 2, which is why you would see them emulated in Forge versions of Sanctuary in subsequent Halo titles. Now I'm just showing off these ledges around the outside of the ring here that you can walk on where you can trick people into thinking that you fell down or didn't make it up into the ring. Now this is a trick you can use with the teammate if you're being locked down in your base and let's say they have two snipers maybe 
Uh, so you don't want to poke out. You don't want to go on your P Street because they may have a Sniper Ring 2 looking down it. Sanctuary Team Slayer was the only game type at the end of Halo 2's MLG Pro Circuit run that had the Plasma Pistol on it. It should not be overlooked and is basically a power weapon. As you can see here, it tracks even when your reticle isn't red, but will not attract opponents that have no shields. Here's an aid where you're trapped on blue side of the map and the other team has control of the ring. You can go to one of these crevices on the pillars on either side of the ring, look straight up, and move your reticle slightly to the left. As you can see, my gun barrel lines up almost exactly with the wall straight up. Now, if you aim too far to the right on this spot, your grenade won't go as close to the opponent there. If you were to aim too far to the left, your grenade would hit the ceiling and not even damage the opponent. And you can do this from the other pillar. Just move your reticle slightly to the right while looking straight up. Here I'm showing if you move your reticle too far to the left on this first spot, your grenades will actually bounce off of ring 3. Not far enough to the left, and the grenades won't land in an optimal spot. Now, red base is a little different due to how ring 2 is shaped on red side. Their grenades don't really have a place to land if you throw from the same spot. But really, all you have to do is set up the same exact way, and then take a few steps back. Now here's a nade spot where you can nade the players hiding at the bottom of the carbine ramp on blue side from red base. Just walk into this corner, aim your reticle at it, look above it slightly while unzoomed, and throw your grenades. If you don't aim up high enough, your grenades will bounce off the wall. You can't do the exact same thing for red base's carbine ramp because there's this cliff face that overhangs a little bit. What you have to do is move away a little bit and sort of aim your reticle at where the player would be on the other side of the wall and then jump when you throw your grenades. Now if you need help lining it up, see there's these kind of three black lines here. I'm shooting at the one in the middle, but there's one that's close to the left and there's one that's further away on the right. If you stand in between the one that I shot at and the one on the right, I'm kind of right in the middle. Just aim my reticle so that the top left quarter circle of my reticle lines up with the top of the wall. Jump and throw your grenades at the top of your jump. Now I'm going to end the video here with a uh, Hail Mary sort of grenade. You'll want to be on this step here at the snipe spawn on either base. Look at the pillar straight ahead and move your cursor up until that pillar you're just aiming at is completely covered by your hand and wrist. Then jump and throw grenades at the very top of your jump. If you're too close to the wall on the left, you'll bump your head when you jump, or if you're too far to the right, you'll fall down the step as soon as you land, which will mess up any grenade after the first one. Now here's where the grenades will land. If you know they have a sniper here, or their sniper is about to come up, you might want to throw some Hail Mary grenades and hope to get a kill. Stay tuned for my final video next week.